Hello Inner Vikings! Welcome back to a vlog right here at Sign of Horses. Today is the day when we're going to exchange our historically incorrect sheepskin neck rocks and replace it with a historically correct Skoldahaven hoodie. So get your scissors and your crafting materials because you are going to make one with me. Go shopping while I roll the intro. You are going to need some material. I've got some linen here. You're going to need at least half a yard. Probably best to get a yard. Mm -hmm. A pair of scissors and a measuring tape. Always handy. You're going to need needle and thread, or in my case, I'm going to cheat and use a sewing machine. Oh. You're going to need some beeswax as well. Um, I've got my order coming in, so you place your order while I go get mine. Pen and paper to draw the pattern. That is the first thing we're going to do right now. Get your measuring tape, get your pen and paper at the ready. These are the measurements you need to take. Make a loop all the way around your head and then give it a bit of um, space, room, so you can easily just, you know, get it over your head. That is gonna be the width of your hoodie. Yeah, so mine is uh, 60 and I divide that in half. So 30, that's the first measurement I'm going to write down. 30 centimeters, because I do everything in metric. Because I'm a Viking and I don't know if Vikings did it in metric. Probably not. But I'm doing it in metric anyway. <laughs> 30 centimeters for my, for my head. Next measurement you're going to take is right from the middle of the top of your head straight onto your shoulder because that's going to be the height of your hood. Uh, it's going to be approximately. This is not rocket science. If it was rocket science we would be on the moon. Um, my measurement is 35. Easy peasy. The next measurement you might want to take is from the from the from your shoulder right to about where you want your hoodie to end. Then you're going to figure out how big your, you want your hole to be. So this hole, that hole, uh, da, da, da. Um, that was going to be 60, right? Yeah. So you write down all these measurements and then you come up with this drawing. This drawing. Remember measuring around your head? Divide it by two, that is this measurement. Remember measuring around your face, that is this measurement. And then from your shoulder down to the length you want is this measurement. You add these two and then you get the entire length. Complicated? It's not as hard as it looks. Welcome to my slightly messy desk. This is your face, your Viking smiling face. And this is your neck and these are your shoulders. I ask you to measure around your head with enough space so you can easily fit it over your sticky out ears. You divide that number, in my case it was 60, divide it by 2 so you get to 30 centimeters. You write that down on a horizontal line, going like that, 30 centimeters. Then you've measured from the top of your head all the way down to your shoulder. In my case, that was 35 centimeters. I'm going to add a little bit extra um, because I like to have uh, maybe a uh, braid on the top of my head or a little bun. So I'm going to need a bit more room to fit that. So I'm going to make it 40 centimeters. I'm going to go down the line and 
right down 40 centimeters. And then I measured from around this spot down to my shoulder and that was another 30 centimeters. And I'm gonna add that to my 40 right there and right down 30 centimeters. From here it's dead easy because I just turned this into a big old rectangle. And I'm going to add these two numbers together and 40 and 30 makes 70 centimeters. This is going to be my first panel out of the fabric. So it's going to be 30 centimeters wide and 70 centimeters long. Then I'm going to need two other pattern pieces and that is the same one. Uh, it's a simple square and both sides are going to be both sides are the same, that's usually the thing with squares. Both sides are going to be this number, 30 centimeters. Easy peasy. And it's cutting time. This is the scary stuff, the scary stuff. As you can see right at the top here, I have the fold of the fabric. Um, that is going to be the top of my hood. So here goes. I'm going to need 30 four centimeters. And don't forget to have your seams two centimeters wide because that's the seam allowance that we gave ourselves. The good thing with linen is that I can make a snip around that 34 mark right there and then just leave my rigging on the fabric. Always be great. Blah. And now I'm going to need 72 centimeters from top to bottom, and that is just the entire bit of fabric. Lucky me, that's perfect. Then the next thing I'm going to need are two squares of both of. 34 centimeters. Snippity snappity. And these are my pattern pieces for this project. First, I'm going to sew this one to there. Like that, and then I'm going to sew this point to this point, like that. Sew along here. Then I'm going to close up this. This is going to be your hood end. I'm going to do the exact same to the other square, except I'm not going to sew up this edge at all, because that is going to be my uh, the hole where my face goes through. I hope you understand this. <laughs> it's not as hard as it may look. Just remember that you sew side to side, square to square, get the opposite point, and you end up with two triangles on each side. So you'll end up with something looking like this. Ta -da, da da ta ta! There is sewn the bits and pieces together. Can you see how I did it? This is the square and it's sewn like a, like a handkerchief, like a triangle onto the side of the longer piece and the same on the other side. Now what I wanted to show you is that I still have two sides of the hood open and I'm going to have to make a choice which one I'm going to close off. What I wanted to show you is how I'm going to sew this side shut. I'm going to start at this end, so at the end where my little <laughs> handkerchief square is attached. I'm going to start right there. I'm just going to pull this back so I don't double sew it, fold it over and then I'm going to sew from here right up to there. Now you can see already that the fold of the fabric is not perfectly in the center of your hood. That doesn't matter. We'll have to make a new fold. But that way you don't get any wonkiness 
in your hood. If I would have trusted that the fold would be in the middle and I started sewing from there, then I end up with too much fabric on one side and not enough on the other. So what you do is you just sew from the last point that you left off and then sew right to the top of the hood and close this up. And don't forget to sew two centimeters wide seam allowance. And I'll show you why in a minute. For me, this is where the hand sewing starts. I always do the invisible seams on the machine. It's just a lot faster and, I'm, and then I can just take my time and really enjoy doing the rest by hand. We have a good seam allowance, two centimeters of seam allowance. And the reason for that is because we want to fold, not just fold it over, but fold one side over the other side. So what I'm going to do is cut along the stitching I made. So that is just one end sewn. This I'm going to fold over that smaller bit and then fold over again. And that is how you get a lovely felled seam. So you're gonna cut one edge a lot smaller than the other edge. You're gonna fold that one over and then fold over again and then you just hand stitch along the edge right here. Just a few stitches and you have this beautiful edge, invisible edge, no fraying. Just really really nice and pretty. I'm just using a simple slip stitch to attach the filled hem to the fabric meaning I'm only picking up a tiny little stitch at the front and then just securing the hem with a loose running slip stitch. And this is me modelling the finished linen hood. Uh, not for long because we're now going to beeswax it. Find the vlog in the little eye icon on my YouTube, on this YouTube video because there's instruction on how to beeswax some linen to make food wraps and this is the same process to beeswax your hood. The only thing that I've changed is that I've used, I'm using these silicone oven mats like silicone baking paper to protect my ironing board and I'm still using parchment paper to um, protect my iron. And after you've ironed the whole hoodie make sure to just scrunch it up And then you have the finished end result. And it is, truly is, waterproof. Yay! Bring on the rain! Here it is, the Viking Skolderholm hood, made of linen, partly hand sewn, partly machine stitched, and made waterproof by ironing beeswax in it. Now I think the Vikings would have done their ironing with a hot stone, probably melted the bee beeswax, maybe put it in a pot. They would have a different way of doing this. But why not use a little bit of modern convenience to make historical items and make it easy on ourselves. I mean, we are not living in Viking eras. We don't have everything at our disposal like they would have makes me kind of jealous because, you know, I had to find out stuff all again where in Viking Age it would just be taught within the community. Whereas in these modern days you just have to kind of find out by yourself or watch YouTube videos like this. So for me this is trial and error and what I've learned in my life as a costume designer and I hope to pass it on to you guys. Uh, and I hope you pass it on to other people. Please share your knowledge, whatever knowledge you have. Do it in an open and a positive way. We also have YouTube. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you pass the knowledge on and make the Viking family grow. And I hope you manage to release your inner Viking. Ah! I'll see you next time. Bye.
the measure, bleh. This is hard. Well, hi there, Innerbarkins. <laughs> okay, we can do this. <clears throat> No. You've got a bit this hood. I'm a talking hood. I'm a talking baking hood. <laughs> Too much talking. Bleh.